The history of this country is ever changing like its hills in the South Island. The Germans have gone from a collection of disorientated, disorganized nomads to one of the largest economic and political world powers. With a towering collection of achievements in all sectors, Germany has the right to be considered the political, cultural, and economic center of Europe. While innovations such as the car, originating in Stuttgart, Germany, have changed the entire world, even today Germany is considered the country of efficiency, quality, and know-how. The national pride within Germany, the smooth system of government, and the positive influence that Germany brings to all regions of the earth is unmatchable by any other country. But the road leading to this now towering superpower was long and full of hardships. Along the way, many mistakes were made and much suffering was caused. But to truly understand and truly comprehend the Germany we see today, we must go back to the very roots. We must go back to 1871 and the preceding years, the years that allowed to the first German unification. The European stage was left devastated and confused after the reign of Napoleon had ended. The great powers attempted to restore some equality of power to the Congress of Vienna in 1815, and this was somewhat successful as it resulted in relative peace for about a hundred years. However, the Congress also resulted in was a region in the center of Europe with ethnic groups which had been split by borders. The region of the German was divided into Prussia, Austria, and a range of smaller states. Meanwhile, a large part of the German regions felt oppressed by Austria. Especially the fast-growing Prussia felt Austria was in the way of her development. As she was military not in the position to do anything about an Austrian suppression, she did have economic strength, therefore trying to fight Austria in an economic political war. Steps towards doing so was for creating the Zollverein. With this, Prussia had created an economic union out of which Austria was intentionally excluded. Through this, Prussia's trade within the German Confederation grew, and so did Prussia. By 1860, Prussia had overrun Austria on the subject of economical strength by far. Also, Prussia exceeded Austria largely on the issue of railway lines in use. Theoretically, Prussia had expanded to overwhelm Austria in every subject but that of size and military strength. Here, Prussia had faced the problem. It could no longer expand further with Austria in the way. This is the point where Otto von Bismarck comes into the game. He realized quickly that Prussia and Austria as such could not coexist. What he also knew was that he could not start war with Austria as for now, where there was a small chance that Prussia would win, especially if the other European powers decided to support Austria. He knew he could only win if they remained neutral. He could only ensure the neutrality, however, if Austria strikes the first blow. This, until the war, remained Bismarck's main ambition. Although Bismarck was strongly idealistic towards monarchy and his ideals coming from his younger childhood, and strongly failed for his general ambitions, he nonetheless took the chances when they arose, rather than waiting for his idealistic goals or general ambitions to be somehow achieved. This type of governing is nowadays called realpolitik. He saw such a chance in the stasi Holstein situation, where he hoped to achieve his general ambitions. Nowadays, this is often referred to as the Danish War. The Danish war started with Denmark creating a new constitution where they claimed the two regions of Schleswig and Holstein Danish. Although it was ruled by Denmark for centuries, large amounts of Germans lived there. Naturally, this caused riots and Bismarck saw his chance. He ensured that the Danish would receive no support from the major countries and went to calm the situation in Schleswig Holstein in accompaniment of an Austrian army. His true intent, however, was not to calm the situation, but much rather to annex the regions. The Danes quickly saw logic when the armies approached and gave up, giving Prussia and Austria the territories. After the Lichten tried to govern the duchies together or failed, a solution was found in the Treaty of Gaststein in 1865 to let Austria administer Holstein and Prussia Schleswig. This was ideal for Bismarck, for now he had a chance to pick a quarrel with Austria whenever he wanted over the Duchy of Holstein. The quarrel he did. However, before he could proceed fighting the once magnificent Austria, he needed to ensure that no other countries would get involved. He was convinced of Russia's and Britain's mentality within the issue, however, French mentality was not yet certain. And, although a meeting between Bismarck and Napoleon III occurred, it remained somewhat uncertain all the way up to the war. Debates over the schleswig holstein issue soon started in the Confederation, and equally soon the two rivals, Prussia and Austria, got into major disputes. After unrealistic claims were put forward by Prussia, Austria started mobilizing for war. Bismarck, in return, asked fellow German states to mobilize against Austria. But what he got in return was that the German states started mobilizing against Prussia instead of against Austria. He gave the three northern states of Hanover, Hesse, Kassel, and Saxony an ultimatum to ally with him or to be considered enemies. As a rejected, Prussian forces were sent to occupy these three states. The war quickly came around and Prussia managed to win it successfully because of its fast mobilization through the earlier mentioned really superiority and supreme military planning, especially while winning this war for the South, making Austria have to fight her forces. This resulted in Prussia winning the war with little to no losses. In return, Prussia gained the northern territories commanding them into one North German confederation. Although he did not manage to directly incorporate the southern states into one from the fine Germany, Bismarck did win their military support in the event of war. It turned out that exactly this event of war occurred 10 years later in 1870 in the Franco-Prussian War. This war was once again the result of Bismarck's ingenious reactionary politics. 
At the Spanish throne was offered to his one southern relative, the Prussian king, William I, which greatly outweighed French nobility. Bismarck managed to alter the communication between France and Prussia by changing telegrams so drastically that France felt insulted in national pride to the point where she declared war on Prussia on the 19th of July, 1870. Like the Austrian war, it was quickly won through the superior mobilization of troops on Prussian side and, more importantly, by the military support of the southern German states. After the victory, the common despise against French amongst the Germans had gone so far that it was converted into general German patriotism. These patriotic feelings caused people to wish for this military alliance to turn into a general alliance or union. These feelings helped Bismarck negotiate, and after long discussions, compromises, some official and some unofficial blackmail of the former nobility, the German Union, or Zweites Reich, was born in November 1871 at Versailles.